Turn with me, if you will, to Romans, or Revelation, sorry. Revelation, the second chapter. And we're going to start in verse 1 of Revelation chapter 2. So in Revelation chapter 2, starting the first verse, we find this. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard, or your hard works, your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found a new false. You have persevered and endured hardship for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the heights from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But if you have, but you have this in your favor, you hate the practice of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Let's pray. Grace your God, Heavenly Father. I just ask you to take the illustration of my heart and my mind, make them yours, but they come here from you and not from me, and I have nothing to say besides what you have to say, Father. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. So first off here, what we have is we have Jesus here, and he is coming to John, and he is giving this revelation to these seven churches on how to overcome the problems that they got going on in their lives. And as we look at becoming an overcomer, um, we, we want to start looking at these things, but I first want to say understand that Christ is here. The Bible tells us that where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am also. So walking among us is an unseen visitor, the Christ, and he is among us and with us so that he is here. And what he wants us to know today is the same thing he wanted this church in Ephesus to know, is that he knows your needs. See, I like to just start out and say, he knows. See, because it's, it's comforting to me to know that I have a Savior who knows. As a matter of fact, I get overwhelmed with this, that the Son of God, that the guy who, the, the Jesus Christ, who literally hung on a cross and paid for my sins, even though I am so unworthy, didn't just stop there. He knows me. He knows me. He knows all the things about me. And he knows all the things about you. And he loves you. See, it goes on to say that I know your needs. See, I know what you've been doing. And he starts off with giving this church a lot of praise. He goes, I know what you've been doing. I know the good things you've been doing for me. I know that you are out there and you're trying to live a life worthy of me. I know what you've been doing for me and how you've been serving me. See, Christ knows that about us. He knows what's going on in our lives. He knows our tormels, our troubles. Anybody have problems in your life? Anybody? Amen, man. Amen. I had inventory this week. I, I had to figure out how to town and take care of it. And I always love when the, when, the, when the vice president of the company, a Japanese guy who I can't even pronounce his name, comes up to you and he goes, Hey, Troy son, I hear that you're the key person on inventory. And I go, No, 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 that guy was my boss. And then he pulled me aside and has a meeting with me. And I said, You know, I mean, come on. So, see, I know that if you're like me, you have problems in your life. Now, here's some of the problems we have when we have problems in our life. And we get on our church face. Anybody get to get, you know, everyone has a church face. You walk in the door and say, how are you doing? Oh, praise Jesus, we're doing so good. <laughs> now, on the way here, there was a shouting contest between you and your husband or you and your wife. All right? Kids in the back seat, you know, what you're doing. Every time you're hitting your cars, you know, hitting your back, you're sick, you know. 
You pull in the parking lot, you jump out of the car. Stephen, man, how you doing? Oh, praise Jesus, we're doing good. Nothing going on in our lives. We all good. Jesus knows your problems. He knows your trials. He knows what's going on in your life. What I love about God is when I come to him in prayer, I don't have to fake it. I don't have to act like I'm doing something different. I can be me and tell him exactly what's on my heart. Amen. You know, it's funny. One of the struggles I have at work is the way I talk here and the way I talk to you all is the same way I talk to everybody. And unfortunately, it's the same way I type up emails. <laughs> Putting dude and man and bro in an email is something that a lot of people don't like. <laughs> to the point where I usually have to have, depending on how high it up goes, one of my people go, hey, hey, will you do anything exciting? Can you come and check this email? Now, what took me two minutes to type out takes her five minutes to correct. Alright? <laughs> to the point where IT, she, she actually put in a help this thing. Do you all know there's a website out there for everything? There's a website out there for you to basically put in your email. You copy it, you send it to them, and they send you how to say it back in managerial. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know your troubles, Jesus says. I know your problems, Jesus says. You don't have to come to me and act like everything's going well in your life. You don't have to come to me and act like all this. You don't have to come to me and talk something different. I know your troubles. I know your problems. I know your pain. You don't have to think things. If you're saved, he loves you and knows you. I know your deeds. I know your works. I know your problems. And I know that you cannot stand wicked men. Now, it says here that I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, and that you have tested them, that those who claim to be apostles, and found them to be false. In order for us to know who is right and who is wrong in the world, that means you have to know the word. Okay? Because let me just tell you, we have an enemy who was created before time, who existed before earth ever was formed, and who for the last 20,000 years have found no uncertain amount of ways to trick and to torment and to trick people into doing what he wants. If you don't know the word, the world will make it sound like the world word is right. They'll tell you that love is love is love. They'll tell you that you don't have to be married to be in love. They'll tell you all these different things and make it sound all really good. But you have to know what the Word says so you can stand your ground. And that's what this church did. They knew, and they did not tolerate the wicked people. They tested it, but they knew what they were doing, and they knew what they were testing. See, and this was a Baptist church. You know, that was a Baptist church. This is the kind of church you want to go to. It sounds like they got everything going on right. Look at all praising them. He even says, you have persevered and endured hardship and my name and have not grown weary. Man, life can wear you out. Life can wear you out. I love my kids, but you know what? Sometimes kids can wear you out. My wife loves me, but sometimes I can wear her out. <laughs> Y'all thought I was going to say she can wear me out. Like, hey, that's <laughs> right? See, sometimes these things in life just come down on us, and Christ says this, I know you have persevered. I know the hardship. Isn't it a good thing? Jesus knows your hardship. 
hardship. He knows the problems you got going on. He knows the things. He knows what's wearing you out like. Jesus knows you. And he knows the situation, the problems that are wearing you out. And what he thinks and what he wants from us is to know that we did not go weary in his name. This sounds like a great church. It sounds like the kind of place you would want to go. How many of you got report cards when you were growing up? None of the report cards you got growing up. I used to hate report cards growing up. I, I, I was I, I was the kind of kid that I would have to calculate what I needed to pass certain tests and grades. Okay, I made the top ten look really good. Okay, but no matter what I did, there was always one grade that got me citizenship. Okay. <laughs> While everybody else was not sweating that grade at all, that was always my worst grade. Okay? And when I got to my point where my dad would look through the grades, C, 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 B plus, close enough. What, what, what's, this, what's this citizenship grade? See, just like my report card, this church had a problem. In verse 4, Jesus tells us what the problem is. He says this. He says, yet <clears throat> I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Uh -oh. Remember the heights of which you have fallen. <coughs> repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and I will remove your lampstand from the place. Let's just break this down. First of all, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Love. How many of y'all remember when you first started dating? Uh, I still have. I still have. I still have a love letter from Christine. You know, because you, you know, you were in, you were in, you were in math class and you you, you didn't get a seer. So you know, instead of paying attention to the teacher, what you do? You, you wrote a letter and you smooth talk. You know what I mean? I didn't do that. And then what Christine would do in the next class, she would check another piece of paper and she would interpret what I was trying to write. Okay? <laughs> She was the original translator, okay? And, and, and you know what you do, man? You couldn't wait to get to your spouse. You couldn't, you couldn't wait till you got a chance to see him again. You couldn't just wait till you know that moment when you got to just, just be with him for a little bit. Y'all remember long distance phone calls when it cost you money? Uh, yeah. yeah. Christine lived in the corner of Jimmy Bethel in the beginning. You spit through your teeth and you could do all three counts. The problem was it was long distance. But you know, I would call her up for 10 cents a minute. And I would call her up, and sometimes we just have nothing to say, we just sit there on the phone. Because neither one of you want to say goodbye. Are you all remember that first little stuff? Remember back when you loved her like that much? Come on, amen. Tell her each other. Yeah, come on. So what Jesus is saying here, he says, remember from the highest which you've fallen, you have forgotten your first love. Now, hear me. Hear me. Listen up. They wasn't not doing what they were supposed to do. They were doing everything right. Okay. They were doing. They were doing. They were doing all this stuff. They were living their life good. But they did it without remembering their first love. They forgot their first love. Jesus doesn't want you just to go through your life doing good things for him. That's great. Or are you doing it with his love in your heart? He wants you to have his love with you. He wants that love to be what kindles your life, and he wants to be first in your life. Listen, there's a lot of things God cannot be. Okay? Everybody thinks God's all powerful, and he is. But there are two things that God cannot do He cannot lie, He cannot sin, He cannot die. And cannot be second in your life. Okay? Things that God absolutely refuses is to be second next to nothing. And yes, I know that there are all kinds of things in this world that drag our attention and drag us away from God. And God says, you remember me. Remember from the heights of which you have fallen, repent. Now, let me ask you something. Y'all repent for something that's not a sin? 
We repent over sins. So because we no longer have God as first in our life, this is just not a lifestyle, this is just not a choice, this is not a moment, no, no, let's call it this. This is a sin. God wants to be first in your life. He wants to be first in your life in everything you do. Christ wants to be first. Remember the heights from which you have fallen and do the things you did at first. Go back to Christ. Find that love. Reconnect with him as first in your life and do what you used to do when you first accepted him and you were on fire for the Lord. When you were on fire for him because he wants to be first in your life. <coughs> if you do not, I will come and remove my lampstand from its place. Here we have it. We need Jesus in our lives. We must have him in our lives to be able to withstand the pressures, the trials, the tribulations, and the hell that is coming at us when we walk out that door. You want Jesus with you? You want him in your life? Then you remember him as your first love, because he will not be second. He refuses to be second. And I don't care if you're doing everything right, and I don't care if it's me as the preacher of this church, or you, or anyone else, we all have the temptation and the problem and the risk of falling. And if we want to overcome this world, if we want to overcome the problems, the first thing we have to do is have God first in our lives. There's a promise. I love when I find promises in the Bible. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who overcomes. So what we got here is the message that, that Jesus Christ is telling the pastor to present to the church. And now what he's saying is, church, if you have ears, I want you to hear. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. Now, let me just, let me just clarify here. This is not about salvation. Okay? What this is about is about rights and privileges. How many of y'all have ever been a membership somewhere like the zoo or something? Anybody ever done that? Yeah. Every so often, if you're a member, you can pay. You, you got the basic membership where you know you can get in for free. And then you got what is called the exclusive memberships, right? You know, for a couple hundred more bucks. You can get extra privileges where you get extra time in and out. And then you've got the rich people, okay? You, you pay a couple of grand, and you can come to the elite programs. You know, you can come in and you can have dinner, and while you're having dinner, they get the dolphins come up, you know, and give you your spoons and all that different stuff. Because I ain't gonna have dollars for that. Right? But you know, you've got the elite dinners where, where, where you can come in and extra and do all these extra things. See what Jesus Christ is saying here is look, I don't care about your money. I don't care about what you're doing. I don't care what you want. If you want this privilege of being able to eat with me and be able to come to me and have fellowship with me in my house, you've got to love me. You've got to put me first. And when you put me first, then this is the privilege you get, which you can come to the tree of life, which is the garden of the paradise of God. You get special privileges. Everyone who believes in the name of Jesus Christ will be saved and get to heaven. But that doesn't mean everybody gets to eat at the table with Christ. That privilege is reserved for those who overcome and overcome by his love. So, let me just tell you, when I was a kid, I hated thunderstorms. I, I hated thunderstorms. As a matter of fact, whenever I get scared of the thunderstorm, uh, especially when it was during the daytime, you know, or when, in the, in the, when we were at home at night, and, and Dad was on the couch chilling, 
I would run up beside my dad and I would crawl up next to him. And I would snuggle up next to him. And when I lived beside my dad, I always tried to mimic his breathing. I tried to breathe the same time he did, so I could think that me and him were kind of the same. But when the thunderstorms rolled by and they, they scared me when I was in his arms, I wasn't scared. Because I had that privilege of being close to my father. Jesus Christ is saying, love me first. And watch the privileges I give you in your life. The privileges to become an overcomer. If you need to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior today, and there's problems in your life that you need to overcome, the first step is having him as your Lord and Savior. If you need Jesus Christ in your heart today, Lord and Savior, come first and forward today. If you're looking for a church home and God has called us to be the place, come forward today. If you just need someone to pray with you because hell is raining down on you, come forward today. We are here to love you and meet you where you are.